Hi everyone, my name is Mohammad Kardan. In this video, I'm going to discuss about weighted normals and why should we use weighted normals instead of normal maps and what's the benefit of using them compared to normal map. Okay, uh, in this scene, as you can see, we have so many boxy shapes like this drawer or this dresser or this picture frame most of them looking boxy and have, have they have uh, hard edges as you can see they have hard edges like that and yeah okay what is very normal and why we use them uh, for example, in a, when we make a box like that, let me do it like, okay, this is a box, and this is another box. Without waiting, uh, when we put bevel on something like this box let me doing it like that okay this one is looking more better compared to this one okay but uh, in games we are not allowed to using this amount of poly in, on such a boxy shape like that and we can't put a lot of chamfer on it with lots of edges and it's not performance wise and we can't use it so we have another option they say it's like okay using use this box as high poly and name it like high for example box high and name this one as box low yeah and do a good UV map on this one and check them all fold them, orient them, lay out them because um, my layout is let me do it I want to stack on similar yeah yeah and try not to spend uh, lots of extra spaces and all of that okay so the idea is uh, make it low and make it as high as possible however you like it at the end you will decrease this model to this one and like you do that and bake it on marvelous uh, mar marmos set tool bag and let me show you i want to show you one picture in here where is it this one i described in here so well so let me come down down okay come down for example this is our model it has it's this one is the lowest the low version it has some hard edges and then uh, separate them and all of that and then bake with the high high density uh, polygonal and that for example Uh, 
this one is low and this one is high and bake it on uh, on, uh, on each other and produce a normal map of it okay so think like for example um, after after we bake it uh, it gives a normal map for it produce a normal map after we bake it in one master tool bag and this is the normal map of the high poly to the low poly and for example in here do you see for example this little extra details are coming from the high poly to low poly and um, that it has normal map on it okay okay this pillow is has so much things to going on but this box is just a box for making a box and try to have high poly and low poly and all of that I wanna say something else about weighted normals weighted normals ideas come from uh, first of all if we do from high to low for some simple shapes like that it's time consuming first second of all it has a normal map and normal map for our game engine compared to maybe from maybe uh, six edges become 20 edges uh, 14 edges more it's much much better and performance wise compared to uh, lots of extra normal maps to load to the game engine okay so uh, what's the alternative thing in games and what should we do to make our assets looking better and uh, not and and focus on performance as well okay so first of all uh, I know in Maya how to do that it's working like you do um, a bevel on your model but it has uh, this option has to be none if it's uh, out of uniform uh, it doesn't work after you bevel it you ha it has to be none then for example we bevel it like something like that okay it's looking the same as this one okay so then we have to go in here I have them in here but I have so I want to show you then we go to unlock normal we hit it we have it in here then we say okay uh, we go to face mode click the shapes that we want to be hard not the edges that we don't want select the hard uh, faces then we go in here um, here and go to set to face okay we click it and now it's and then we uh, go to soft images okay so as you see in here let me a little bit decrease this one As you see between this shape and this box and this box visually they are looking the same okay they're looking the same but this one has 150 faces this one has just 26 so compare this shape to this one is that 
uh, comparing uh, this technique and this technique is that this technique needs baking on marmoset tool bag time consuming and uh, at the end uh, because our shape is low and we put normal lock on it this one looking visually uh, performing better compared to the bake baked one of this asset okay so so uh, for our game engine uh, is better to have some little more edges and faces compared to have another texture okay so weighted normals is having some little bit chamfer and these uh, settings manipulate them I told you and then we export our model in here as you see uh, it has a little bevel in here it's not sharp Do you see it's not sharp and lighting uh, renders more better compared to it's sharp like that and in here you can see the difference between this one and this one and how the lights works you have a really good uh, shadows uh, what is that in here compared to this one super flat and for most of my assets I used it you see in here in here uh, in my on my windows it has a little level on it or in here as well I didn't use just simple box I did some um, level on it and it's looking much better you see it's looking like a high poly and it and most and none of them I required normal mouse think like if I wanted to use normal but for this phone for this phone for this door it takes a lot of time to go to marmoset to bag again uh, bake them all of that again um, put our textures in here and again uh, assign them to the material of these assets and all of that it's uh, super super time consuming and um, most of the time we have to think like uh, don't use any bevel on our models or uh, we use weighted normals technique uh, or if something like complicated like this pillow or mm, yes yeah, for this pillow or this blanket because for in our texture we want to use normal map or oh, I put this uh, asset on substance painter and because in my in substance matter I want to bake it on, uh, on the UV and once want to do my texturing stuff on substance painter was uh, not a big deal but we can't uh, use it for all of our assets it's super time consuming and yeah I hope you get the idea and learn from it and at the end I wanna mention uh, how did I learn this technique thanks to Emil Sligers he is a lead 3D marmot artist and he mentioned and learned this to me uh, on, I watched on his videos video tutorials and uh, he's really talented I owe him a lot <laughs> and uh, 
Thanks to him, I learned weighted normals and used it on my uh, so many of my assets, like for example this one or in here. And it's super convenient to using weighted normals and making it makes your scene a lot, lot more. Uh, visually looking better so thanks to him I learned it and plus that I want to mention something else at the end of this video that let me show you so this is Resident Evil uh, 7 it's 2017 as you can see in their cabinets they have bevel look at it they have a small bevel on them Yeah, you can see that in here. One edge in here, one edge in here, one edge in here. Okay? And I mentioned something on res on Max Pin 3 that um, let me show you in here. Because I was wondering for making this shelf, this bookshelf, I was thinking like okay weighted normals is good but for this asset should we use all the time weighted normals are we forced to do that or maybe we can sometimes uh, make our assets uh, edgy and boxy like that and I mentioned that in Max Payne 3 uh, this shelf that it has no weighted normal, no bevel, no nothing. It's just boxes. Do you see that? It's hard. It's hard. This one is hard. Do you see? They are all hard. But in my scene, as you see, I've uh, did bevel on them. But I think in this case, maybe it's not. Uh, so necessary to do it in here or uh, in, in this uh, table I didn't do that look at it I didn't do that because I thought like okay the character wants to uh, the camera is in here why should I spend some uh, polys on such a thing like that do you see yeah, it, there is no bevel in here it, it's different it, it it depends you know but in here I did a really nice bevel in here let me show you the table um, so this is the desk in Maya you see it's all hard because there is, was no you know maybe I wanted to bevel it okay let me bevel it but how maybe you know bevel it like that it doesn't force it because uh, it all depends on the camera do you see you can see that little little chamfer on that so it's all good that was the reason I didn't do that but in here as you can see I did a nice bevel with a lot of edges and you see the results look at it the lights shading so well look at it where did it go when characters come you can see that it's in here you see the lights shading so well but in this part we don't need that yeah it, it's all uh, depends on um, for example uh, in, in this in here max Pin just wants to come in here and go and there was no reason to do a chamfer on it okay
it depends. So before we, for example, in here, there are, we have no beba. We have nothing. You see, it's all hard. But for the uh, doors of the cabinet, we have it. A little bit we have it. But uh, on the top, no, we don't have it. So. In here I used it because I felt like it's a big asset that would be cool to have a chamfer on it but uh, I did it in here but I think like it wasn't necessary you see there is no big difference it's just a little bit but it wasn't necessary Yep. Again, again. Huge thank to Emilio Sliggers. I highly recommend you to uh, go and buy his tutorials. He's super awesome. I learned lots of things from him. So, hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. See you to the next video.